Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. So we got another exciting uh, video going on today. Um, man, I've been on a roll. So this is, this is what, Monday? And so I've got three, well, however long it's going to take to get through this, uh, this new stone. Um, I'm going to shoot that today. I shot one yesterday on the um, 200, or the um, fine side of that silicon carbide uh, eBay stone. And then the day before I finished up the, or no, it was the day before the day before that, I finished up the series on um, lapping the, uh, the, the coarse side of that silicon carbide eBay stone with, uh, you know, the, the rubbing stone, the diamond stone, the cinder block, the cinder block with the sand, and then the silicon carbide powder, and um, that was all real exciting. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a natural whetstones um, yeah, Natural Whetstone Company's Soft Arkansas, okay? It's, uh, I was going to do this one on a Dan Soft Arkansas, but my Dan Soft Arc is a soft and black, and so one side is, you know, soft, and the other side of the soft is glued to the black, so, um, what I'm hoping to do is going to need both sides of the stone open so that we have access to both sides of the stone. Um, actually, first of all, this has already been a pretty busy uh, morning. Um, I'm going to show you around the shop, uh, show you, actually we'll turn the, the camera on, and while it's warming up, I'll show you some other stuff. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, a lot of my favorite YouTubers, um, you know, when they say, you know, other projects they're working on, I usually kind of like to see that. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, just kind of interesting what everybody gets into. So first of all here, um, I think I've, I've told you all I've been cutting down an awful lot of trees, right? So this right here is a, um, a stump of an elm tree uh, that I cut down. I think I've, I've got four more trees that I know of that are all uh, that size up to maybe twice that size. And they're all some sort of variety of elm. That one's about, uh, I want to say it's about 20 inches from that side to this side. And I needed a new uh, stump for the shop anyway. This one's getting kind of beat up. Um, but anyway, so since I'm, I'm or, you know, cutting all these trees down, I figured I better start planting some new ones. So this is my shop refrigerator. Everybody ought to have one of these. And I don't know if you can see all those those little cups in there. Those, each one of those cups, uh, well half of them do, the other half of them don't, have got um, uh, pits from uh, nectarines that I bought at the uh, the local, uh, oh you know, a farmer's market. Um, so they're from Palisade, which I'm guessing that's fairly close to here, otherwise it wouldn't be, you know, at the local farmer's market, right? So I got 10 of those, we're gonna, um, apparently they require cold to germinate, so they're gonna be in the refrigerator for the next couple of months. Um, and then over here, this is some, um, I think I showed you this in one of the other videos that haven't published yet, but this is some maple burl I picked up um, day before, well, Saturday, whatever day that was. Uh, when we went to some friends' 50th wedding anniversary, I stopped by one of my uh, new wood suppliers in Wheatland on the way up there, and he had this, uh, well, there was two of them that size. There's that one. The other one is cut up. Uh, this right here is the stuff that wouldn't fit into my uh, wood dehydrator. So it's going to go down, all of this is going to go down to my other shop. Uh, that's a piece of maple burl that I got from the first time I met him. Uh, and some of that is in is in the stabilizing chamber. Okay, so this is filled up with cactus juice. I think I've done videos on this before. Um, so this is, uh, uh, it's been under a vacuum. I just shut it off about 10 minutes ago and I started pulling it last night. Um, you know, when you start pulling a vacuum on this, all the air that's in the wood, you know, gets sucked out, and so there's a whole bunch of bubbles. Well, you know, once you get down to the point where there's just a couple little bitty, I mean, itty, itty, bitty bubbles coming up, then that's about time to quit. Uh, you cut the vacuum off, and you let it sit 
without a vacuum for twice as long as uh, you had a vacuum on it. So anyway, so that'll sit for another couple of days and then we'll check on it. Uh, this here is the, the wood dehydrator that I built out of an old uh, RV refrigerator. This was an ammonia system. Um, once they start leaking, apparently uh, it's not really worth fixing the things is what my um, uh, appliance guy was telling me. So this right here, is uh, that that new maple um, this right here this and this is mostly cottonwood burl this is box elder uh, we've got some more maple burl and some more box elder I think there's some spalted stuff in there too so anyway so once I you know this stuff that I got from the fellow's name is Daryl the maple um, it's already pretty much dry so it, gets, you know, it comes into the shop, I chop it into small pieces, and then it goes into there. It'll sit in there for a month or two or whenever I think about it, and then it pulls out, goes into the toaster for a couple hours at 200 degrees to drive off the rest of the moisture, and then it goes into the stabilizing chamber. So that's all pretty exciting stuff. All right, so what we've got here, and I had this, uh, thought we were warming up here. Okay, there we go. Let's turn it on to the video mode. Okay, so what we have here, I wanted to show you this before I move the stone because I got it all nice and focused and I wanted you to see this. <coughs> Where'd my pencil go? Uh, we'll grab a new one. Okay, so this here is the surface of this uh, Natural Whetstone Company's soft arc that I'll show you here in a second. Um, lapped to, uh, like I said, 50 grit with the, um, the Thumbler's course, okay, which supposedly is 60, 90. It looks more like 36 to 50 grit to me. Okay, so when you look at this, it looks nice and clean. Um, the Arkansas stones look quite a bit different than the man-made stones. That happens like every other time we do a video here. One of these days I'm going to remember to shut it off. Um, okay, so the biggest thing here is that the actual grit size of this stone is probably, um, you know, I'd hate to put a number on it, but, you know, these right here are the actual grits in the stone, okay? Um, so this isn't a graded stone, or, you know, because it's natural. But these are usually classed, they say that the soft arc is a medium stone, and it's going to be, you know, 600 to 800 grit, somewhere around there. That's going to be the effective grit range of this stone. Okay, and then you've got, uh, but you've got different colors in it, all right? But it's still kind of the same deal. So if it is an 800 grit class stone, and we've got it lapped at 50 grit, okay, that means you're going to have 800 grit-ish particles of the stone with 50 grit, you know, scratch patterns and valleys in between them, okay? So, uh, yeah, this is the way we're going to do this, okay. So, this here's the stone. It's a nice one. It's a 10 by... Uh, 10 inches long by 3 inches wide, uh, but it's only a half inch thick, okay? So this side right here has got no markings on it. Well, I mean, it's got some pencil marks left. And this, this also didn't come flat, okay? So the only part that's flat is from here to here. I was going to flatten the whole thing, um, but honestly, you usually end up using the middle portion and then, you know, flattening or just grinding away the edges and not using them. So I left the edges a little bit low in the thought that as I use the middle, it will come down until it meets these and then we'll be all nice and flat, right? This side right here, I've got a G written on it in magic marker, okay? So this side we're gonna glaze and we're gonna glaze it first and do some, some cutting tests. Actually first, Let's look at this side underneath the microscope so you see what it looks like before. So I want to say I had it lapped to a 220 grit finish. Uh, okay, so there's a spot with a whole bunch of water on it. So maybe it'll help you see, um, 
you know, the 220 grit scratch pattern. And then over here, you start seeing this, um, like with the silicon carbide stone, it looks like a mat. With these stones, it doesn't really look like a mat so much as it looks like, like drywall texture. Okay, so like if you look at your walls, you know, in your house, if you have drywall, and of course we're here on this, well, no, we're going to carry you in. <coughs> we'll just go ahead and take a field trip. Wyatt. Wyatt came out to shame me. He doesn't usually show up on film too well. He's a little bit dark for that. But let's go ahead. Let's come in here and look at the wall. All right. Here we go. Here's a patch that the sunlight's coming in on good. Oh, okay. All right. Everybody wants to ham it up. All right. We got Claire and we got Doc. And we got Wyatt. And these are, you know, this is my Labrador pack. And boy, they're they're all about a hundred pounders. So when you show up to my front door, that's um that's quite a bit of Labrador all at once. I mean they're not like mean or nothing, but um, you know, they're still dogs, so there's that's a lot of so anyway, so this is drywall texture, right? Okay, so when they made this texture here. You take a, a drywall texturing rig, it's got a hopper, and you feed uh, drywall mud in the top of it, and then uh, you have compressed air that shoots through the bottom of the texturing rig, and it, it sprays it out, right? Okay. So when it sprays it out, it's all going to be in globs. You let it dry mostly, and then you come back with a trowel, and you flatten it. And that's where you get these flat spots. So the peaks, instead of being pointy, now they're knocked down flat, okay? So that's what that, um, that soft arc is looking like to me. So as you use that stone, you can kind of see now, if you remember the drywall, so like this right here would be a flat spot. This right here would be a valley. Um, this is kind of out of focus, but it's a flat spot. Uh, here's another valley. Okay, so that's kind of what, what I see when I look at this. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. It's got some shop dust and some metal particles in it and stuff. But Okay, so now to glaze this stone, I pulled out an old cleaver. Because cleavers are, you know, nice and big and heavy, and there's a lot of there's a lot of steel to be able to grab a hold of. Because we're gonna, um, you know, pretty much just try to glaze the surface of this stone up. So we're gonna start with some oil, and then maybe we'll finish without oil, or with just, you know, not enough oil. Okay, so at first it feels like it's cutting pretty good. Let's get this back so that, there we go. And then we're just going to press real nice and hard. Because um, we're basically just trying to dull the surface of this stone. see all the black on there already that's uh, steel so we're basically we're accelerating the wear on this stone we're gonna try to get it um, to where it's looking like you know it's been used for you know a month or two or six or whatever much as I'm beating this stone up and it still feels like it's cutting pretty good. I mean it's slowed down quite a bit but it's still cutting. Okay so now actually now let's take a look at it underneath the scope with all this swarf on the top. 
you know, just because we got the scope out, we'll play with it. It looks like we've got metal shaving colored mud sitting on top of our stone. So let's grab a paper towel. And that's still just the oil floating on the top. Okay, now let's look at the swarf right quick. Hmm. I wonder where. Maybe that's just a chunk of uh, a chunk of steel. It's kind of interesting. I've never. But oh, there's a steel shaving right there. Oh, and that's kind of what this looks like. So maybe it's pulling off little ribbons. Maybe we've got a burr going on there. I didn't even check for one because I wasn't trying to actually sharpen it. I was just trying to beat the stone up. Okay, so now to accelerate wear even more and to really glaze it over, let's take all the oil off. And we'll really, oh, there is, there is a burr on there, so maybe those ribbons of steel that we were getting uh, were parts of the burr getting peeled off. Okay, there we go. Now, I mean, almost instantly, that stone isn't cutting as well as what it was before. There's parts of it that still are. So, what we're going to do here, the, the whole idea of this whole test right here, is kind of what we did with the... Uh, um, the fine side of that six stone. Okay, so we're gonna take, um, so with the six stone, what we did on the fine side was we took it as I got it from the eBay seller, right? Sharpened up a knife and did a rope cutting test. Looked at the scratch pattern up underneath the microscope and we wrote down our results for the um, you know how well our knife did in the rope t cutting test <coughs> and then we freshened up the stone and then we did another rope cutting test and kind of compared the results so this time we're going to do the same thing only we're going to take it a step farther we're going to do it with a glazed stone then we're going to do it with the 50 grit or the the side that's been lapped to 50 grit Then we're going to go 220 grit, and, you know, relap the stone at 220 grit. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, so we're going to lap the stone at 220 grit, do a scratch pattern test, and then a rope cutting test again. And then I've also got the pre-polish and the polish. It, with 500 grit and 1200 grit. So we're going to get to see kind of the range of what this stone is capable of um, along with you know scratch uh, patterns on the microscope and rope cutting test at the same time. So that should give us a really nice overview of what this stone is capable of at different grit finishes, um, different conditions, and uh, and have you know pictures and rope cutting tests to back it all up. Okay, so this right here is is looking pretty pretty wild. A lot of it, I think, is the um, uh, the oil that's still in there, the mineral oil that's still in there. Maybe we'll go from the top view. Now see that looks to me an awful lot more like the um, uh, like the drywall thing. A lot of it is kind of difficult for me to see because of the oil shining up on there. 
but we've got these big areas that are flat and then little bitty uh, valleys in here that have got the swarf in them is what it's looking like to me and then it's almost like because that can't be the size well maybe it can be the size of the particles of the stone but we've got a lot of light reflecting off of them so you know are they dull you know I don't know okay so now that we've seen it underneath the, the scope uh, no actually let's go let's go one more step here okay so we're gonna use my Victor and Ox Tinker okay the one that's that I carry every day in my pocket now the last edge that I put on this was with the fine side of that silicon carbide stone so So we'll have several different edges to compare here. Okay, so this is a scratch pattern. And it was off the, the silicon carbide stone after we'd lapped it to 220 grit um, and conditioned it at 220 grit. So it was cutting really nice and aggressive. Um, and you can see that these scratches you know, like I said in that video, they look, the edges of the scratches to me look sharp, like they were made with a sharp abrasive. And then right up in the very edge, we're losing a little bit of it through the camera and the, the TV from what I see when I just look through the scope. But the scratches in the very edge look nice and crisp to me also. They look real nice and crisp. And then we're actually going to, so we're losing quite a bit. So what I see in this microscope, you know, with the naked eye through the, the eyepieces, is quite a bit different than what I see, you know, going through the camera. You know, because now that image is going through all the glass in the scope, right? It's going through the camera, which the camera's a 24 megapixel, so it's a good camera. And then it's coming through the TV, which... You know, I think the TV's an okay TV. It looks nice and clear. Well, then it's going through the GoPro. And then we're also going through whatever kind of uh, screen that you're looking at at home. So, you know, there's an awful lot. Um, <coughs> what I see through the, the microscope is an awful lot clearer than what I'm seeing when I'm pointing at stuff. And then that's an awful lot clearer than what you're seeing at home. So I'm hoping that that we end up seeing at least what we need to see, right? Okay, so that's a 220 grit finish. So now let's go ahead and put an edge on this Victor and Ox with our glazed side of our stone. So this time we are going to use oil. And this knife is already sharp, right? Okay, and the geometry is already pretty well set. So it's not going to take long at all to put an entirely fresh edge on this knife. Or it shouldn't, anyway. I mean, I can tell that this stone isn't cutting very well. Um, I mean, it still is cutting. It's not to the point where I feel like I'm just, uh, you know, rubbing a, a chunk of steel on a piece of glass. But it definitely isn't cutting the way it should. Okay, there is a very, very light burr there. And this right here is part of the thing that always drove me nuts about oil stones. Is that you would get them fresh out of the box, and boy, they'd cut really good for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 knives. And all of a sudden, the dang things would just slow down, and it'd be like they'd quit cutting. And then you just sit there for hours, sharpening, sharpening, or what felt like hours, sharpening a knife, and it was like you weren't really doing anything. And then you'd read all this stuff on the internet, and you'd read in, you know, books and everything about how oil stones just got better and better with use. And the whole time, I'm thinking, uh, this is better and better? This actually feels like, 
it took a, a good stone and now it sucks. Okay, so now we got a burr on that side. And then a lot of times when you see somebody sharpening with an old oil stone, look at the angle that they're sharpening at. It's usually atrocious. I mean, just really, really high. Probably because they sit there and they rub on this, this rock that's not doing anything for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and they get sick and tired of it, so they raise the angle. Um, they raise the angle so that they're not sharpening the whole blade, uh, edge bevel, they're just sharpening the very end of it. Kind of like doing micro bevels on purpose. Or micro bevel angle for your normal sharpening angle, right? Okay, so we got that burr um, moving back and forth. It's not feeling quite right, but Okay, now it's micro bevel, so we're going to raise our edge up, or our angle up to a quite a bit steeper angle. Yeah, the reason I picked this um, this Victor Knox is because that's one of the blades that we used with the silicon carbide test. And as good of a knife as it is, you know, they dull fairly quick which means that we'll be able to get more testing done. Okay, so we got that done. Yeah, we're popping hairs. So now let's look at the edge underneath the scope. The camera timed out again. See, it took me so long to sharpen this knife on that glazed over stone that my camera timed out. What's up with that, huh? Now look at that. That is quite a difference. Okay, so that silicon carbide stone, um, the new Nortons are classed as being like a 320-ish grit. I've always found that the older ones were a little bit finer, so instead of being a 320, maybe they were a 400 or a 500, something like that. That These scratches are a third of that size, if not less. I mean, they are extremely fine. Also, you can see this, uh, is that just the position I have it? Maybe a little bit. You can also, or at least I can see, um, that I've got three planes here. I don't know if it was because I was talking about it as I was sharpening it, or if the, because the stone is dull, and that's what caused me to start doing it. I don't know, but from here to here is one angle, okay? From here to here is another angle, and from here to the edge is a third angle. So this right here was my original bevel, right? This right here is where I micro beveled it. This right here is where I must have got tired of sitting there rubbing on this glazed over stone and steeping the angle to shorten the sharpening time. Pretty crazy, huh? Like I said, maybe it was because I was talking about it. Um, I don't know. So anyway, so let's do a quick rope cutting test. <coughs> So we need our, need our knife here. Okay, so I explained this in the last video, but pretty much, actually no. I'm going to want to explain it a little bit more, um, and then we'll start all over. And we're, all, we're at 29 and a half minutes already. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and shut you off. Um, basically, turn you off, upload this, um, start a whole new video. Um, going to go over the, the rope cutting test again, you know how great I think it is, 
what we're after with the rope cutting test. We'll do a rope cutting test on this edge and then we will flip the stone over and start with the 50 grit side, do the same thing, dress it to 220, do the same thing, and keep on with the test. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery, and find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you here in probably about 15 minutes.